It may surprise some of you to learn that Chairman Mao's native language was not, in fact, Mandarin, but was rather a variety of Chinese known as Xiang, which is natively spoken in Hunan province. Uh, despite him being such a big figure in Chinese history, we don't hear much about Xiang or know much about the varieties of Chinese that are spoken in Hunan province. Most of us today are aware that Chinese is not a single mutually intelligible language, but is rather a collection of different, not necessarily mutually intelligible languages. In Hong Kong, we're very well aware of this owing to differences between Mandarin and Cantonese, but between these two, there's a lot of different varieties we may know less about, and one of these is Xiang. Xiang isn't often given much attention in descriptions of Chinese, largely because it is difficult to define linguistically. There's a lot of variation going on. Oftentimes, the speech in one locality in Hunan may be incomprehensible to someone just a few miles away, and it's difficult to pinpoint a standard version of Xiang that all speakers can understand. So my research focuses on this variety that we have in Hunan, the specific ways in which Xiang differs from Northern and Southern Chinese. The academic consensus here is generally that Xiang represents a uh, transitional node midway between the North and South of China, uh, sharing features of both Northern and Southern Chinese and in some way mixing them together. In this sense, it's kind of like a linguistic missing link between the North and South. Uh, but we might wonder then, how specifically does Xiang differ and what similarity does it have and what makes it unique? Uh, so in answering this question, I collected 47 narratives from across 16 different localities in Hunan by putting up an online experiment which required speakers to watch a short video and then narrate the events in their local dialect. In this way, I collected several narratives which allowed me to look at particular linguistic features of interest. But today I would like to focus on just one, which is vowels and hesitation markers like ah uh and um in English. Um, so hesitation markers are these small words which tend to occur uh, to fill pauses in speech. They're generally used to give the speaker more time to think about what to say next. And in uh, Mandarin, the most common vowel is something like uh, whereas in Cantonese it's something like a. Eh. However, in Xiang, we find that there are four different vowels that occur in hesitation markers, including these previous two. And I verified this by looking at 300 different hesitation marker vowels and pulling them together and analyzing their vocalic quality. So clearly we see a very high level of variation in a comparatively small region here. These findings confirm previous views on the transitionality of Xiang, on how its geographic location midway between the north and south is also reflected in its linguistic structure. Now, owing to recent changes in, in uh, the linguistic landscape of China, as more and more dialects tend to be abandoned in favor of standard Mandarin for reasons of employment or education, it has never been more important to pursue research into the language of Chairman Mao and other dialects between the North and South, uh, so they may gain increasing legitimacy in the social sphere, not just as objects of study, but as living languages.